Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time to stop by, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate. And to my returning subscribers, thank you so much. I always appreciate all of you and I don't take you for granted. So thank you so much for your support. And so guys, let's roll in into this video here. Who are the white liberals? Who are white liberals? Let's go straight into this video and I'm going to be catching you at the end of the video with my comment. white liberals will very often take on all these different queer and neurodivergent he goes on to say how he feels that white liberals take on these identities as a way to mitigate their white privilege and i just want to say that i think this is a very dangerous mindset to have and it's going to harm a lot of people for context, I have been diagnosed with multiple physical and neurological disabilities, and I've been identifying as queer since I was 13 years old. This, to me, just reeks of repackaged transmedicalism and blatant ableism. The idea that people are taking on marginalized identities just to feel oppressed is fucking disgusting, quite frankly. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that that hasn't happened a couple of times, because it probably has, but... A good parallel to draw is when people constantly talk about people faking a disability for attention because the reality is that that is such a small portion of people that it doesn't even fucking matter. Like, do I really need to pull out the chart of left-handedness for people to understand why more people than ever are identifying as queer? Do I really have to do that? Like, huh, I wonder if the uptick in people identifying as queer could have anything to do with gay marriage being legalized or queer communities becoming more visible to people but no it's just them wanting to feel oppressed right this is not nearly as well-meaning as you think it is it's insulting to queer people and it is insulting to disabled people and now i know that if this video gets any traction at all people are going to accuse me of being one of those people who just wants to identify with marginalized identities in order to get oppression points even though like i said i have been diagnosed with multiple physical and neurological disabilities this has been my reality in one way for, or another for my entire life the amount of people doing what you're claiming is such a marginal amount that it doesn't even matter currently for us to talk about it because disabled and queer communities are both being targeted by hate campaigns and legislation right now. And those of us that live in the intersection between those two marginalized identities know that we have bigger fish to fry. Your video is going to cause real harm. It's gonna cause people to question themselves. I'm sure you're familiar with the term imposter syndrome. That is a very real thing, especially in the disabled community, and you are aiding in that. The audacity of you to post this during Disability Pride Month too is absolutely beyond me. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and act like people self-diagnosing strictly from TikToks isn't an issue. I'm not gonna sit here and act like there isn't misinformation being perpetuated on TikTok, because there is. But as I said, we have bigger fish to fry right now, and you absolutely could have gone about this better. It doesn't matter if you're doing this in good faith. It's not helpful, and you are only aiding the people who want to hurt us. I didn't grow up in money. But you know the word privilege gets used a lot? Well, you know what I did have- Really? His father was a patent attorney. His mother was a geriatric psychiatrist. He attended St. Xavier's High School, which is a private college preparatory high school, which has a tuition of $15,000 per year, went to Harvard, and then interned at a hedge fund. So he's just lying. He's had an extreme amount of privilege from the moment he was born. He's not some outsider who's built his wealth from nothing. He's your average run-of-the-mill billionaire who had tons of opportunities in his childhood and in his early adulthood. I didn't grow up in money. But you know the word privilege gets used a lot? Well, you know what I did have- Really? His father was a patent attorney. His mother was a geriatric psychiatrist. He attended St. Xavier's High School, which is a private college preparatory high school, which has a tuition of $15,000 per year, went to Harvard, and then interned at a hedge fund. So he's just lying. He's had an extreme amount of privilege from the moment he was born. He's not some outsider who's built his wealth from nothing. He's your average run-of-the-mill billionaire who had tons of opportunities in his childhood and in his early adulthood. Here's a test to see if you're autistic. Don't take the test. You're not autistic. 
I know, I know. You want to think you have something that makes you neurodivergent because that will make you special. <sighs> okay. Uh... Uh, th 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 you can do this, you can do this. Okay. I am, I am going. <laughs> I am going to kind of agree with LJ here. Don't get your goddamn hopes up. But I am gonna approach this from a slightly different perspective here because this did remind me of something that I've been thinking for quite a while, which is that it seems like quite a lot of people, particularly white liberals, will very often take on all these different queer and neurodivergent labels, not for any genuine reason, but because in my personal opinion, they cannot stand the idea that they might be privileged. And it really seems to stem from the fact that many of these white people have what seems like quite a strong desire to relate to people of color. And so they feel as if they have to be oppressed by something because, you know, God forbid, they are the same type of person that everybody on the left is talking against. It is definitely frustrating because these people do end up delegitimizing those people that actually fall under these labels. And despite the fact that I'm sure plenty of people listening will understand what I'm talking about, virtually all the people that this applies to will think I'm talking about somebody else. They'll all respond saying, yeah, there are people like that. They're so fucking weird. And I don't think these people are pretending. I, I do believe this all comes from a good place, but I think it also stems from a misunderstanding that somehow the only way you'll have something of value to contribute is if you come from some sort of marginalized group. And I think a lot of people just need to realize you don't need to feel bad just for being privileged. No one's trying to make you feel guilty for something that you had absolutely no control over. They just want you to acknowledge it without undercutting it right afterwards by going, oh, well, actually, you know, I'm also a part of this thing. So technically, LJ touches on this also, or one of the things that's contributing to this, or, you know, all those TikToks saying things like 10 signs, you have ADHD, 10 signs, you have autism. And then it's like 10 different things that are all incredibly common parts of the human experience. Talk to a medical professional if you can. I understand plenty of people self-diagnose, but that self-diagnosis should not come from a TikTok. Personally, I'm of the belief that you are more of an ally if you don't feel the need to change aspects of yourself because you think that is the only way your help will be valued. And LJ, don't even think for a goddamn second about responding to this video by going, huh, well, I do appreciate you not arbitrarily refuting my argument, Yuval. I do find it, the very least, a little bit interesting that the mere notion of simply acting in accordance with my beliefs was so preposterous to you that you felt the necessity to preface your whole preamble with how arduous that decision was for you. If it's that absurd to consider agreeing with somebody that you once disagreed with, then maybe the tolerant left isn't so tolerant in actuality. Oh, so that's a doggy. Is that a good girl? Is she sleepy? She's a good girl. Oh, she awake. She's a good girl. That seems like quite a lot of people, particularly white liberals, will very often take on all these different queer and neurodivergent labels. They feel as if they have to be oppressed by something. So yes, this is absolutely a thing. And not only is it a documented sociological phenomenon, but sociologists have come up with a name for it. And it's called the race to innocence. And sometimes also the race to the margins. It's the same thing. Now, when Mary Louise Fellows and Shireen Razak coined this term back in 1998, they were thinking mostly about white feminists within multiracial feminist movements. So bear that in mind as I read from their article. It is more broadly applicable, absolutely, yes, but that is their focus here. When a woman fails to pursue how she is implicated in other women's lives and retreats to the position that the system that oppresses her the most is the only one worth fighting, and that the other systems, systems in which she is positioned as dominant, are not of her concern, she will fail to undo her own subordination. Attempts to change one system while leaving the others intact leaves in place the structure of domination that is made up of interlocking hierarchies. So Fellows and Razak are implicating and critiquing here that very second wave feminist, white feminist idea that all women share a common struggle, which is only possible to suggest if you are ignoring the unique oppressions of queer women, women of color, women in poverty. And when faced with that challenge, the people who occupy a position of privilege, so in this example, those straight, middle and upper class white women will say, that that's not the issue that we're talking about here. We're talking here about being women. We're talking about patriarchy, misogyny. They will race to innocence. They will race to their own marginalized identity categories in order to avoid admitting that they have power and privilege and are also the oppressor. And sometimes that race to innocence is very calculated. It is deliberate, it is strategic. 
I might be avoiding talking about my male privilege, my white privilege, when I am also discussing being a wage slave because I want to preserve those privileges while attacking the oppression that I feel. But it's at least as often, if not more often, something that we are doing reflexively, uncritically. It is easier to claim solidarity, it is easier to feel empathy if we are doing it from our own position of marginality. And it's easier to speak credibly from a position of oppression and to do so with authority if you also possess privileges that allow you to appear unbiased, neutral, and to do so safely if afterward you can retreat to a place of privilege. So it is certainly possible that at least in part this explosion of straight white cis man leftists claiming neurodivergence is explained by some sort of desire to claim oppression, to build those alliances, to feel that empathy, and to access that credibility. But even if it is sincere, it is still dangerous. And of course, it could be strategic and insincere. When you race to innocence, race to the margins, be mindful of the privileges you're leaving at the center. Guess what? You're a sellout. You're a sellout. That's a white power symbol. This right here is exactly why white liberals are my least favorite flavor of white people. Do y'all really not see the irony of a white man yelling at a black police officer calling him a sellout? What really pisses me off past like the obvious and overt racism is the fact that y'all's primary goal isn't problem solving, it's bitching. See, the negative reaction he has to a black man in uniform, it leads me to believe that he doesn't want black people on the police force. He thinks that black people being on the police force, they're, they're sellouts, they're, they're, you know, selling out their own people, right? So the logical solution to this problem would be to get all black people out of the police. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think, if you believe that the police are racist, right, if that's your belief, do you think that the police would be more racist or less racist if you took all black officers out? And then this man unironically says, that's a symbol of white supremacy when he does like an okay sign, even though he's obviously just saying okay. He views the okay symbol as a microaggression dog whistle, really alerting the white supremacists out there. But he's completely blind to the overt macroaggression of calling a black police officer a sellout. It's either negligent hypocrisy, malicious intent, or just blatant fucking stupidity. And I honestly don't know which one is worse. White liberals will very often take on all these different queer and neurodivergent labels. I literally cannot express how happy I am that there has actually been a study that um like fully explains this phenomenon that white liberals fucking do because i've been thinking this for literal years i had a conversation about it back with my friends in like march about how white liberals just don't know how to take accountability and will stack like neurodivergent and queer labels on themselves to just make themselves look more innocent and i finally feel like i'm not going fucking crazy but anyway i just woke up so i think i'm gonna come at this from a bit of a bitchy angle but even still i was just thinking like this whole time, like, I've always thought to myself, like, whenever a white person, especially on the internet, who claims to be liberal, does something wrong, right? And then they stack all these labels on top of themselves. Do they not all have a certain look to them? Can someone please confirm? They, what, they have a certain look to them. Can a study be, like, launched into that? Like, why they all look the way that they look so like i'll set the scene for you right so now a white person who is like a, i don't know like maybe a well-known internet white liberal or whatever so they've gone out of their way to do something controversial like you know they've been racist xenophobic whatever um and then obviously everyone starts going in on them like especially black people they're like like what the fuck like uh, blah, blah, blah. um and you know they're like oh listen sarah you can't fucking say that and then Sarah is suddenly like, listen, my pronouns are flower and pot. In fact, my name is not Sarah. It's <laughs> my name is not Sarah. It's actually Astra or some shit like that. <laughs> and, then, and, and then they'll be like, I'm autistic and I have ADHD and I have OCD and I was abused when I was younger. And it's like, man, mm? I was about to say my nigga, not, not that. Um, but it's like my guy, my flower pot you called multiple children the n-word like what does what does any of that have to do with anything but then it's like you always go to their profile or you always see their face and it's like oh <laughs> like i mean to me but they all have a certain look to them it's like i don't know if the lack of a skincare routine or bad fucking dye job or awful fashion sense um i don't know if that somehow seeps into their brain 
and just makes them act stupid but yeah it's so funny to me like genuinely i want a study launched into why so many of these white people <laughs> so many of the white people that are like you know it's, especially the ones that stack on neurodivergent and quit pronoun they, you all look the same and the fact that you all look so ugly is just making me even more mad so please can you sort yourselves out but at the same time can you stay that way just so a study can be launched into why you act the way that you do thank you go guys who are these white liberals First of all, you've just seen this guy yelling at a black police officer, calling him a sellout, yelling at a black officer, a uniformed black police officer, selling him a sellout. I think what this guy was trying to imply, what he was trying to bring out, he was trying to bring out something to do with racism. He was actually trying to alert the white people, the white liberals, bringing out white supremacy. So guys, thank you so much. Let me know your take on this in the comment section. And also remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it out too. Let's tune in next time for another exciting reaction. Bye-bye.